So the reality is, is that back in the day that when we would have an advanced civilization such as Lemuria, most of everything would be taking place all in one area. We wouldn't actually be spread out because there wasn't enough for us to spread out anyway. Right. So when all of that came to a close, as most things tend to do, it actually came to a close with everybody almost in the same space. And that's why they're calling it the deluge. Because it would be like us all waking up one day in our fabulous city. We got conflicts. There's stuff already telling us that there's going to be a problem. But it's just today that we find that the problem has reached ahead. And now we all got to find a new place to live because everything is covered with water. Now, if you look at the Indus Valley, and I'm going to prove this to everybody today. But if you look at the Indus Valley, this area, as they've already recorded, is always getting inundated. Even right now, some of those temples are sitting in water. Going out to the ocean, they've already found the original Lemuria. They're just not allowed to dig around it or dig it up or tell anybody about it because the Indian government is still under the British caste system. And to reveal an entirely advanced civilization underwater that was completely destroyed because of the war in chaos, not aliens, but the war in chaos that ensued from us not getting along, it would just break a lot of paradigms and it will push people into actually getting along and being together because we would see the example continuously of when we separate or when we allow something to separate us because this Indus Valley culture in Lemuria, it unites all of us. It's not just black people there. It's not just white people there. It's not just Koreans or whatever other differentiation you can come up with because all of that is pure nonsense. It is no different than in geometry, the difference between a simple racial, as I said, the racial and the racial or the differences. Mm. And on top, if people really want to get this, you know, from like the kid book story level, just think of the grizzly bear and the polar bear. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that is different between these two, except for where they live, that determines their color. And it is because Mm -hmm. when you are in hot places, like the grizzly finds itself in quite a few times, it needs a modulator. That's what the melanin and things do. They modulate. So if it's too hot, you can start feeling cooler. If it's too Mm -hmm. cool, you can start feeling hotter. But when you're in a climate where it's always cold, there is no need for any modulator. So it only takes... 300 years tops for somebody that looks like a dark skinned Naga to turn into one of the vampires off of interview with the vampire (laughs) all paled and in the corner. And that's just how it works, whether people want to accept it or not. So what happened though, in the Indus Valley after the deluge is you had people that survived and they can't stay there. So they went to the different areas respectively. And so thus stories like Dagon, the man who came from the sea, who was really Murugan, who taught some of these uncivilized tribes all this knowledge and became their teacher, the fisher of men who he later on became. And then he became higher my beef because they just killed him and took all the knowledge. Now, that was just like a big jump from what people need to understand. But think about it. You have an entire culture and an original language already on the earth. And some of the top spiritual teachers, even today, holding back the knowledge of what belongs to a whole nother group of people. What am I talking about? Have you ever noticed that in the Bible, there's a story of Abraham and Sarah? Mm -hmm. But in the Hindu text, there's a story of Ab the Brahmin and his wife, Sarah Swati. Have you ever Mm -hmm. noticed how Christ's name is awfully close, close to Krishna? Have you ever noticed why things like the swastika and the Star of David seem to always be found in in like what we call now India and prove that they don't have origins in any of the places that supposedly use those symbols as if they're their own? Mm. So we have to understand that when there are wars, the victors of those wars, they take everything. They plunder everything. Like, think about when you have places like candy, candy is called that way because back in the day, when you put your hands in the river and pulled up the rocks, it was all sapphires, rubies, and jewels. And then that, Mm. when you pulled it up, looked like you were holding a hand of candy. One of the most powerful dynasties in in, uh, this area was actually called Cola. It actually became the reason why we got Coca-Cola and candy. Mm. So on top of that, you got... A six-pointed star who's supposed to be accredited to a Jewish man named David, who was a king, that really belongs to a Tamil man named Murugan, 
who is a king known as the six faced God. And the six faced pointed or six pointed star meant that just the six faces of the God Mudugan. And that being like a Shiva and a, or a, a lingam and a Yoni. And mm. this Mudugan's other name is Davud, but he is nowhere near related to anybody in the Khazarian mountains. So what you actually had was, is you had the caste system being introduced, which was based on the colors of our ascension. We start mm. at black. Okay. Ignorant, wild, young cheetah. Okay. And then we move into the blue, just like if you're working from the ocean, you come from the bottom of the ocean, you're in the black, and then that color you're going to see next is blue. Then you're going to see some green. And that system, which later on became known as the caste system, was actually first the progression of our chakras and mm. our growth in society until somebody came in and made it a racial thing and actually made it to where the white which signifies being clear and uh, actually not being clear. Clear is the last stage. White, which signifies the Saraswati or the purity became like a skin color thing. And then those who were white immediately put themselves to the top of the caste system and became the Brahmin. Mm -hmm. Right now, these same Brahmins with the long beard. Now, remember the Brahmins, which existed way before all this foolishness, always had this kind of motif. They stayed in caves because they were Siddhas. They became known later on as the gods because they were the ones really focusing on honing in the spiritual powers while everybody else was basically doing their thing. Same thing happening now, except the knowledge was more proficient. So if you wanted to become a Siddha, AKA a God, you would basically park somewhere in a cave, which became known as a Shrivaram, which we got our name Aslam from a free place where you can receive help. And these mm. men and women began to study everything about metaphysics, their body. Now, here's the thing. We can always throw some really wild components in here, like getting infinitely big, getting infinitely small, having the strength of a thousand lions, etc. because there's mushrooms around. There's DMT <laughs> hanging around. There's all sorts of stuff in this planet that's hanging around that doesn't require us to make shit up. It just right. is there. And when you take it, it opens up a whole nother thing. So we're still on that quest, right? We'd like to go on it as much as we can, but these people had all day to do it. So achieving right. things like making yourself infinitely small and inseminating yourself into a dolphin's womb, all that kind of stuff was like <laughs> fair had more time to practice. for a seed up. <laughs> yeah. And it's like this, honestly, once you get into it is really what you kind of prefer to do when right. let's say what's going on in average village life every day so anyway these siddhas became known as the ones who like if you were experiencing any problem you just go over there and you ask them how to fix it and they will tell you and many people just donate it to them like hey here's some stuff and that's how really this act of god started because these men and women were just there for hu humanity their tribes looking to contribute and give them the information, knowledge, and wisdom that they were acquiring. Krishna was one of them. Shiva was one of them. They didn't have those names, though. All those are new names. These, this is an ancient dynasty that has records all the way up to at least 5,000 years to also explain to you what happened. What happened? What was the breakdown? And the breakdown was not only their own wars, which became why they became conquered ultimately by those that were always looking to get some of that candy. But ultimately also they had their entire custom hijacked. So when you see in the Bible where God, who's a Germanic King, okay. Good says to his, his, his vice Royce, his, his, uh, uh, um, retinue, let us, go down and confuse them. So right away, you got to understand that when you say, when they say, let us go down, then they're talking to somebody that obviously is lower than where they are. So in the South, so when mm. they say, let us go down and confuse them, they tell you, what are they going to use to confuse them with language? We know that the Bible at least tells us the confusions that the, the fake Brahmins put on all the people was through the language. Mm. So what happened? They removed the original mother tongue, Tamil, which bears a lot of secrets and switched it over to Sanskrit. <laughs> okay. Mm. 
Then this same tribe, why we're still trying to like, I, I was always researching the Sumerians because in everything that I've pulled from archive.org and Gutenberg and from the astral plane, it wasn't putting them chronologically where they claim to be at that time mm. and claim to be who they are, et cetera, to find out that those Sumerians were actually the Brahmins, the fake Brahmins fleeing over into another territory with all this symbolism, the long beards and trying to create their own religion out of somebody else's. In this case, all of ours original knowledge. And the reason why mm. this becomes so important to know, because there's much more on this. I'm not, this is by far a dissertation on this. I have etymology to bring into this. I have many things. It's just a drop in the bucket to what you need to know and what is really going to change everything. Because sometimes when we see like, we've been at this, I've been at this a decade. And you mm -hmm. think, man, you know, what is it going to really take to crack this seal, to break this spell? Now we bought the hammer. <laughs> this mm -hmm. is the hammer that breaks it all open. Now we all, many of us, because I would say, even me, you're not going to, you're not, you don't start knowing everything. So as you gain more knowledge, you have to be willing to go back in there and say, hey, everyone, that what I thought was going on before, this is what changed. But many people don't have the courage to do that. They stick stick with the message they've been giving, even if they found out, hey, there's some falsehood to this message. But right. The, the crazy part, though, is, is that if we always remain in falsehood, then we can never we'll never see eye to eye. We'll never get clear. We'll never remove ourselves from division. So here's the falsehood falsehood. The great right brotherhood, which I just can't say enough to people about when we conquer racism. The racials and the differences, that's when things will change and not before mm. then. So anybody that is doing it is on the same team. <laughs> I don't care right. who you are. I have to fess up to that. Everybody has to fess up to that. So what happens is, is that you have these organizations that are set up now that are multi-million dollar organizations in the conscious community. Many of them are actually out in mountains and in forests and they have people there pretty much hostage. They got some guru or master staying there, lording over everybody. That's why gurus are getting a bad rap. Gurus never got a bad rap in the past. See, that's never got a bad rap. Now we've gotten to a point where we even, even including myself, like, yo, hey, all of them, get them away from me. Gods, Sita's, masters, whoever, they're all practicing in the same club because we don't know who to trust because right. the religions and the cultures have been hijacked by one specific group. And this is what makes this so interesting because as we roll forward, we'll start seeing this is why we have still so much racism in our society. This is why it still pervades. Like when you go to these stations, like even world star hip hop, they just produce racism. When you go like they, it's always a video that's going to promote that. But the original mm. owner of that site is no longer alive. Like hmm. Q started world star hip hop. It just hit the Lexa rating way up there. People are watching that. Our kids are watching it. Everybody's tuning in and it just keeps sending a racist message that, you know, black people are lower or white people are stupid or whatever. And that's what's being pushed out. But the person behind the wheel of that operation is dead. He died in a parlor in, in Las Vegas with some girls. So who's really running that operation? Likewise, when you drive to CNN, it's the same message. So why is there such a strong racial message being pushed? It's because the same people who created what we would call Nazis, created what we would call slavery in the United States, created a caste system in India, created despair in Africa, created Brexits and dis division in Europe, created the, banish the uh, banishing of the Polish, created all those different things are still functioning and actually out in the open all day. And so this is what I'm saying. As a people, when we can approach this metaphysically, it gives us a different stance than trying to approach this as it's the bankers. Because what happens is the first thing that occurs is we get restored to our original culture. When people start to, and I'm not even saying what you see just written out in the open, the sand gams and all that kind of stuff is no different than what happened to the Bible and what happened to the Quran. But we have to know, and I'm here to explain, and I will keep revealing this more even in the Keymaker series, the step-by-step -step process of our disconnection so that we know how to come back together. 
And then right. we dissolve all these different di- these differences because we start learning more of the ancient tongue. Like a lot of people just want to know, well, what does my name really mean? And that's a great place to start. Like go to the Tamil lexicon and start taking small parts of words that you want to know the meaning of. And you'll be surprised to find that the common meaning for those words are actually opposite. For instance, Ra to most people actually means the day, like the Mm -hmm. sun. Ra actually is the night. The Ra was the night and the God of the night, the Lord of the perfect black and was known to be wise because you can only see stars at night. You can't see him in the day. Ra as a being actually felt threatened by other kings that were around him. And that was why he created the eye of Wajet, which was like the eye of Ra. And that eye of Ra is in the ancient cultures, Kali. And as the story goes on, he first developed it to try to protect him from his enemies, but it became so bloodthirsty that it started killing everything. So what does this story mean? During the, when the Kali Yuga began, first of all, Krishna as a Sita decided, okay, I'm, I'm done. And this is because as a Sita, you have the ability to remove yourself from a world. You can choose when you die. So after, let's say a hundred, a thousand, 200, whatever years you're choosing to sojourn with humanity, there's a point where you can say, okay, I, I'm out. And apparently, according to this direct story, when Krishna was about to remove himself from the planet, he left a prophecy. And this prophecy was for five to 6,000 years, we would be in a Kali Yuga. Now, let me show you how there was no spirituality used to interpret this. First of all, the Mayans, as we know them, are people who were escaping from the Indus Valley when the deluge happened. That's why you see that one picture of the heads in the water and one of the one of the people like making it like he's headed somewhere. They're showing Mm. you that picture because that's their culture, too. These are all the same people. That's why it's so funny when you start learning this knowledge, because even in Cameroon, Africa, the Africans there speak Tamil. So it's like, okay, well, this is just a funny joke that's being played on everybody, because even if you start doing a little checking, rather than feeling like everybody is separated, you actually see how everybody connects if you really want to see that. Right. So ultimately what happened is, is that Krishna seeing that people were starting to side more with the, the mainly one king which was always trying to get people to gamble, always trying to get people to be conned, all these kind of different things. And saw people kind of getting into that was like, look, I see you guys are basically going into ignorance. I'm going to remove myself from the planet. And based on what you guys are doing, you're going to have 5,000 years of darkness. So at this rate, this is just like me moving in on somebody and saying, Hey man, because you guys are hanging out with that particular guy, Mm-hmm. If you keep, you, I can tell you that he's gone. He's no good. But if that's what you guys want to do, I'm out of here. So this is why in the, in the English text, it comes out as that when Christ or Krishna died, the whole world fell into the hands of Satan. Now, what we're talking about here is that in the Orthodox traditions of Judaism, where the long beards are world like roar, like the Brahmins. They wear the black, though. They don't wear the white robes like the Brahmin. In fact, if you start studying these, this ancient cabal, you find that they always have the same symbolism. I told people to look up what thuggy is, T-H-U-G-E-E. It's where we get our word thug and the thug culture. And what this stems into is that the thuggies were known to be the worshipers of Kali, and what they purported was always death because of their mis- their confusion. They had a confusion that because Kali became a symbol of death or ignorance, that to basically worship Kali, you need to offer death to her. Right. So they became actual priests of Kali and they remain as priests of Kali today. Every now and then there's some old movies that show you, but they're aligned with Kali. And when you know that, you'll see things like, uh, I guess, I don't know, the Britney Spears or the other chick, uh, uh, Miley Cypress, when she stuck her, sticks her tongue way out of her mouth and does the symbol like she's Kali. California right. itself means actually the, it means the, 
I ciphered this word the other day. It means the the vault of darkness. Basically, mm. that's what the word means wow. when you transfer back into Tamil. And again, this doesn't mean anything evil. It just means that, okay, we know that the sun sets in the West. Kali was a symbol of the sun setting. And that California, when you add fornia to it, it means a vault or chasm or chamber. So Kali means dark or black. So black, dark cavern or chamber of darkness so then when you think about hollywood now let me just try to roll it together for you so it clicks it takes a minute mm -hmm. now hollywood was developed in conjunction with eliester crowley they were very instrumental in the creation of hollywood and all the magical rights that were going to need to be pushed through this thea this theatrical presentation and because of that you start connecting it all because you also remember that wait a minute Madame Blavatsky was even really close with Hitler, but she was also really close in India with some Tibetan masters, too, and learning a lot about this culture to later on hundreds, not thousands of years later, but hundreds of years later, repurpose, repurpose this culture as their own and bring it to us as a people all around the world, whether it's Islam, Christianity or the top religions as them being the gods. See, that was the whole act of the great wild beast, 666 OTO, the golden dawn, 888 great white brotherhood, the brotherhood of Hong, the same thing that GH Reeves died telling us. This is a real thing. All of the ancient culture are ancient culture. You don't have to look at this as, oh, this must be the South, South Tamil people's culture, the Tamil Nadu, no. This is everyone that ever was on the planet all was speaking this one tongue. And when we got routed after the deluge and after after the wars, this tongue was lost. And it has been perpetual that we would never speak this language again because it resonates with us. See, all the languages were built off of it. So when we know the original, it's like having the master cipher and then going back to the word that you're given now. And then right away, you'll be like, well, who who would make the word mean opposite? And why mm -hmm. would they want to do that? And mm. then you start losing all of these teddy bear ideas and rainbow ideas that the universe wants this to happen to us. And all this wild stuff that we create when we bring extraterrestrials into the picture. I'm not saying that there's not extraterrestrials here, but I'm saying the last 5,000 years and the issues that have occurred with humanity have been because of man and woman, not because of off-world extraterrestrials. And we also do have a physical form, a, a spiritual form called a demon or a daemon or a spiritual aspect of ourselves that when we get trapped in this space and we don't move on, we can still speak to others. We can see what it's like to be dead with never coming into knowledge is to be blind only your 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 nose basically what you call your nose works so this is why i'm trying to encourage people that don't get into playing this as a complete game because in the end there's a real price to pay if you don't get your system online what happens is is that first of all because you don't have eyes you're going down to the to the previous level you're not a, you're not expanding you're contracting and because of this you actually lose your ability to see so imagine you can kind of smell your family or where you think you should be, but you don't know. You don't know because you can't really see where you are, nor can they see you. This is what it's like to go down the ladder even one step, let alone mm. two or three. And so this right. is why it becomes so important, because as the future keeps rolling out, these are. These are the imperative things to learn. I, I don't want to talk to our term blue in my face. I would love to take a break and then we come back for this and then round it all in. But what I'm saying is, is that I've investigated this stuff for now you can say 10 years. I can say very strongly on the same path. Just who is the priest of Amen? Like, what is all this stuff written on the walls? Why is this not written right here? Why is this rabbit appearing here? Like, what's up with this culture? These people look the same. Why are they not the same? Like all of those questions and going to Gutenberg, Project Gutenberg, going into the the, uh, the peyotes and the DMTs and, and the psilocybins, going into talking with people, communities, people together, holding hands, doing honorings together, you know, trying to get even the ancient spirits to chime in every now and then, spending long moments in nature. So everything that 
would actually get you a bit bored of spirituality after a while if you're not getting an answer. I've tried all of those processes and glean bits of information that have all brought me to it is it is right here, son. Like mm. I reached the age 40 and finally figured out what was the 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 oversoul that kept contacting me, giving me information through this path in sparse little pieces. None other than my father. So oh, wow. this is the awakening that all of us are also having with these connections that this is not just, okay, well, we find some more information and we just start having another mental thing with it. This right. is where we find the last clue to who we truly are. And then we come present like, okay, now that I know I need to unify, you will watch me spend the rest of my life. If that's what it takes, destroying racism. Mm because i know how vital it is it, this, it actually it's rather simple if you if, if d divide it we fall right like more connected we're more powerful right but why can't we agree on that right like what is right. separating us and and this kind of brings us to the next phase of what we need to do is actionable in the reality i feel like we take a quick break and we'll come back come forward to but it actually involves okay now this new paradigm now a conscious bank Right. Like mm. getting out of the hands of the debt collectors in the banking system. This was yes. how I, I'm, I'm going to I'll get the, the name for you. Saguni. I think the name is S-A-G-U-N-I. This was like what called this guy calls the war, the Mahabharat. Now, the Mahabharat is like a book that is written about all the wars that ensued during a specific time that was only 5000 years ago. And this war began because one cunning king bought the art of gambling into the session with other kings, but he was cheating. And when he ended up, you know, because, you know, kings got a lot of pride, right? So you can see this was already a nucleus for destruction. You can't this built to this. This wasn't something that just happened overnight. Aliens showed up, invaded everything. Nah, this was <laughs> not realizing the power that we all have together and how important it is for us to stick together and taking that, taking advantage of that, not saying sorry to your brother and sister, not being mindful if you've done something wrong. All those, all that lapse of awareness finally reached the head to where kings were constantly and this is what i tell people man you breathe the same air as these beings they're no different than us so the same challenges that come to us will come to you that came to us come to them or that come to them come to us so if you can imagine yourself and you have the responsibility of taking care of an entire nation and you have the resources to do that do you eventually become that dark king from Ong Bak that ends up thinking everybody is your slave and should be working for you and should be building monuments to you? Or do you become that father and mother figure that nourishes the tribe and continuously keeps them in your bosom until they grow up and then they continue to remember you through their prayers and honorings? Which one do you actually become? Because that's what's before you every day. Like we have to remember that balance is not something that you just achieve and you're like, I'm done. Balance is something that you have to keep going every day, right? So every day there was the pressure of taking all of this power and using it for something else. And this gets us to the point of a good segment in the break, because in the cloud, when I refer to the cloud earlier, with Eidolons and Archon, just ideas, gas, et cetera, frequencies, the only way all of that can be interpreted that those languages is by your mind. So if you find in your mind that there's a lot of negative thoughts and a lot of just just crazy stuff going on, this is the, the, the nucleus or the perfect nesting ground for these kind of ideas. We used to call it the whisperer. So I'm sure King gets up in the morning and if he doesn't have control of his monkey mind, damn it, there's going to be, I think that uh, Babaloon is going to rage your entire empire. <laughs> I don't know, you know, and, and maybe smoking a little too much of the soma and all this. It, this is these are the same people. That's what I'm trying to get people to understand. These are this is you out there. Don't take it so far off that they have such a different level of reasoning and ability, especially if there's a lesson that needs to be learned. And ultimately, that lesson was one of the kings pretty much bet his entire empire, but he didn't want to pay. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to pay. And because Saguni was so good at these kind of games, 
Meaning you had kings. They had certain even rodents that they just let a box of these off into your village and then come back three weeks later and they can pretty much take everything because they would eat all the food and all other stuff that you needed to survive. So many of these kings had different levels of cunning. Some of them had certain plants, weeds, ivies, and things that they could plant. And that was different forms of warfare. That's what became the martial arts. Mm. So Saguni's form of warfare was this kind of thing. He used girls and he used gambling. Sounds like Vegas, right? Because yeah. it is. <laughs> so what happened is, is this, this trait, this, this, these, these crafts are not new. This is what Robert Greene was writing about, right? The Naviats and you know, using the power and the forces, right? So this is what he did one, it, it, with one of the Rajas. He basically made one of the Rajas bet their entire kingdom. And instead of paying when the Raja lost, because he would have to pay his entire kingdom, he never paid. So he was forced to wander the desert and there was like a, or the forest. And ultimately what ended up happening is, is Saguni promised other kings that he would give them a portion of the land if they collected it. And this is where the wars began. And that began the Mahabharat. Wow. And so we see this war, that particular style of war, by the way, it's like etched somehow inside of our redundant process of learning the same lesson. Because every time generally there's a major war on earth, it generally involves the same group of people, the same act and the same mistake. And this is why Noah so told his sons, look, now what, what was Noah's story? He survived the flood, right. right? So all this is symbolic, but there's a lot of symbolics in here. Some of this stuff is literal, but he did say something to his sons for those that wrote, that read all the books. I read all the books. I was really trying to figure out where this God character was, needed some help. Mm -hmm. So the reality <laughs> was, is that what Noah told his son is that, look, there was a deluge in the world last time because, and he explained it to them because we, you guys start, we started fighting basically the, as the land grew numerous, cows grew numerous, people started fighting over who had the best land. And then this basically caused war to happen. And then it says, then it started in land again. It's almost like an Azazel or something. It just starts to where people start to hate each other and people start hating being around each other. They stop not commun They start not communicating with each other. And this brings about a deluge. So he said, look, don't basically don't do it again. So you don't bring this upon the face of the earth again, or else the same thing is going to happen again. And now almost the exact same design from which we basically saw with World War II, the symbolism that was being used, the desolation, all that is actually playing out again as if they want humanity to stay on this repeat. Like it's a part that's etched inside of our own consciousness. But now that we know about it. Now that we know how imperative it is for us all to do what we naturally do when we're together, when I'm on a kayak or a raft with a bunch of people, we become friends so fast when it's time to get with those waves. Right. We don't be looking at each other like, um, you know, I'm, I mean, he's the wrong color or whatever the right, case right. may be. And so the real disease that is being caused right now with our division is not actually being purveyed by us anymore. It's not being caused by us. It's being caused by the idolonic forces that know as long as we are divided and we've seen this so many times, as long as I don't care what the conflict is, as long as we're not together, yeah. they're going to be able to win every time. So right. whatever we do in the conscious community, no matter how many prayers that we make, no matter how many things that we do, how many flowers we put up, how many different weird symbols we look at, none of that stuff will work. And that's what people need to understand. It's like we've been led on now at this spiritual tangent. And even some people are coming out of these ceremonies, still coming back into the hate and back into the division. Right. And the great thing about it, though, is now we can identify this and see, well, that means that when we get rid of it, then we'll all be together. And then most importantly, we will do this for our children. 